Kia ora tēnei te mihi ki a koutou katoa. Um, yeah, uh, really uh, honoured and uh, humbled to uh, be here to present and be supported by the whānau. Uh, this will be sort of a uh, bit, bit of interaction going on, so I was wondering if you could get your um, phones out and go to modicompass.com. Um, yeah, there's going to be an interactive part coming up pretty soon. So, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys plug in there. So, um, I would like to talk about and demonstrate how we use the... Uh, thank you, Rome. For old Dan, he always gets the uh, curly um, presentation requirements for myself. Uh, yeah, but so uh, it's, it's an honour to be able to talk about the Modi Compass. Um, it's an environmental tool designed to assess and restore the Modi of the waterways in the Gisborne region. And uh, yeah, it was de uh, developed mainly by my father, and I brought the tiki, geeky stuff along with it, and he, he brought the tiki on to it. Uh, it's currently been used by the Gis Gisborne District Council in its wastewater management resource consents. And also, uh, we have to transition over into the freshwater plan, where Modi is mentioned 34 times in the plan, all the way from the vision right to the objectives, right into resource consent. They all shout, take into account, and uh, yeah, uh, as part of the assessment, uh, include Modi as part of those things. So it's, it's um, ingrained right throughout the freshwater plan as well. Um, and Te Runanga or Te Runga Nua Kiwa, uh, a group of iwi are also using it for our own uh, iwi-based projects. Okay, so I'll go back uh, to those that... Uh, there's some of the whānau, our SEAL team from uh, 2014. It uh, uh, was actually an evil symposium back then. And if you Google symposium, symposium means uh, a drinking party and convivial discussion. So, it's good. Ken, it's good to see that uh, we've gone to a conference. We're a lot more seemly this time. Uh, yeah, so uh, that was a great time, and uh, our, our SEAL team then talked about the Modi Compass and how we were applying it to our, one of our landfill, our dump sites back in uh, Gisborne. So uh, it's my opportunity to take, I'll bring you an update. So where did it all, it all come from? Um, seeing uh, Matua George Katipa there, Hori Katipa. Um, a lot of this work was done when Dad and I were travelling the Motu uh, we were supported by Te Wai Māori Trust and the Seafood Industry Training Organisation. We we're a private training establishment and we we're delivering customary fishing qualifications, level three and four. And we, met, we were lucky enough, we had a golden journey and we got to 300 marae all around the motu uh, delivering these um, NZQA qualifications. So here's a, just a snippet of our time and uh, beautiful uh, Te Pūaha, uh, Te Pūtu o Ta'o. Um, yeah, and talking tuna and learning, and uh, we were lucky, Dan and I were lucky because we actually did, we were the ones who were learning, and we had 300 marae, and we were like the students. It was such an uh, awesome, enriching experience, right down to lunchtime when Matu Hori was teaching me new stuff I've never known about freshwater species up here. And uh, yeah, that, that was where the compass thinking and, yeah, ideas came from, development came from. So this year we've been lucky, uh, Chai Tanga Mahaki, uh, we've been supported by Te Wai Māori Trust. Uh, back in 2006, uh, we, under contract to the Ministry of Fisheries back then, we ran a, a formal stock assessment survey of the, of the tuna up the Waipawa River. And uh, this year we've, we're going to repeat the survey, but we're using the Māori, Māori Compass framework. Uh, so it's not just about the tuna in the river, but we're taking a lens back and, and looking at the other key aspects of it. So uh, yeah, we're, we're including, uh, as well as the you know, odorless and ageing and, and et cetera, we're also going to, into our marae and as um, uh, Rupu was talking about the uh, looking after that knowledge, or the tawhito knowledge there, it's all included in the, um, the framework. So we've got uh, 12 marae, 30 sites of significance, uh, some of those, um, those were the yeah, mixture of our marae, uh, special habitat requirements for the tūra, and sites of significance as well. So we're re revisiting those, but with a uh, broader, broader focus. So the aim for the Taitao Mahaki is to restore the modi of the Waipawa River. And uh, here's an example. Last week we were at Tekaraka School. Pretty much Tekaraka is the heartland of, uh, of Taitanga Mahaki. And the site of significance there, Tekaraka School. So the difference this time, last time we came up with a real flash report, 120 pages, only science boffins could read it. This time we're going in hearts and minds, 
and we are going through schools. So everything we do, we teach straight away to schools. So that my tauranga is instantly transferred. Um, yeah, so it's uh, sites of significance and, oh, should, sorry, let's get the mouse right. Rangatira Marae there, so we've got the connection of the Marae, sort of significance, our awa, our kura, and drinking water and for, the, for the settlement, town. Okay, yep, so it's all about hearts and minds again, teaching tomorrow's scientists today. So education is a big package, no point in just me knowing something, we've got to transfer it on straight away. So we're incorporating it in with the uh, curriculum. Uh, so part of the assessment, we drone it, so, yeah, kids love drones and stuff like that, buzzing around. So drone it, map it, 3D model it, so we've got models of our marae and, and also the waterways and the habitat. Uh, track it, learn it, teach it, restore it, change it, share it. And then through uh, social media, so schools are picking up on it, loving it because they're getting, the kids like me, that are bored inside a classroom, want to get outside and do stuff, learn stuff. So without them even knowing it, they're recording all the data onto their um, smartphones, getting uploaded, so you've got your literacy, your numeracy, your science, but you're also getting the reconnection back to your, to your awa and to your whenua. So how does it work? Is it working? Is it working, this question? Is there a play button? Oh yeah, it's going around, okay. So we wanted to simplify a really complex thing and make it nice and simple so pretty much everyone can, can see it and get it without having to read hundreds of pages of appendices and things. So we've got the compasses set out in 12 attributes. And these are the typical questions as we go around, around the compass point. So we've also mapped out, so blue is good, red is bad. Simple as that. So for each of those 12 attributes, if, if you see a lot of blue, then that's a strong, that, that attribute has a, has, has a high level. So as we go, how plentiful are the eels? So I'll start at the top there with a um, Okay. So the first third is dedicated to tangata whenua. So Dad said, make sure you've got to go through the front door. Whoever uses this has got to go through the front door. So they've got to go to the tangata whenua, the people of the area first, before they get past go. They've got to go through. Um, that was a safety, safety net, so it couldn't be abused and misused. So tangata whenua, only these first four values can only be valued by the tangata whenua. Simple. And if you make it past that, then you can start looking at these other areas, which is the realm of Tani. So these are the effects on land that affect the water. Things on land affecting the water. Because water's normally quite good when it comes you know, out of the sky. It's things on the land that pollute it. So your habitat, your biodiversity, your water biology, so that's all your fecal contamination, your chemistry. So these are, these are things, that tool, things that are already being monitored quite, quite a bit at the moment, you know, the extract kits. Councils use, um, you monitor these areas quite a lot, but we're talking about looking at the whole picture. So coming up to the last third, which is the realm of Tangaroa, and for rivers, tuna is our, our key species. So it takes up a third around there. So we're looking at the abundance, or well basically we're just looking at the quality and quantity of tuna. Are there heaps, are they healthy? Do we have them on the marae table like we used to? So the cool thing with the, uh, the compass is you can look at, say, abundance, and if you have low abundance, you also have weak mahinga kai. They're interrelated. So low, low abundance of tuna must mean, oh, you haven't got, can't put it on the table. And you can start seeing all these interactions and see how they affect each other. So you see a lot of complex things, but really simply, and then you can go in the next stages and start working out why those areas are depleted and how you go about restoring them. So there's the values. That's what a sort of typical table is. Uh, what it look like. Okay, here's the interactive part. So if you've got your uh, phones on the Modi Compass page and you can see this, you'd click on, click here to enter the data. So when you're out on the field, click. And this was uh, developed by my uh, cousin, Wurumu Ruru here. And the cool thing here, you go allow location services. And this can be done on any phone, anywhere, even if your phone isn't in cell phone coverage. 
as long as it's got a little GPS thing, it'll record this, and when you get back into cell phone coverage, it'll upload to the uh, database. So you'd enter your name there, so if you've got time, you can enter your name. You click on, oh, I can't because I haven't got the thingy, but you want to enter my number? Or anyone's name? Yep. Okay, and then you just push on, if you're out and about, and up the top of the Wanganui there, you click on that button there, it'll automatically locate you on the map, and then you start going through the questions. So paperless, on, yeah, paperless society, yeah, less paper to lose, um, and easier to track as well, because it's all just automatically uploaded. So there you go, say for example here is, how strong is your connection to your river? Very strong, the river runs through our veins, we use it all the time for food, drinking water, to heal and to purify, right through to terrible, the water's too polluted to use, we don't go near it, which unfortunately we see too often. Uh, so there's a series of questions there and comments, um, I haven't got time to go through them in detail, but there's the um, Tangata Whenua area, now we're getting into the habitat, biodiversity, te water temperature, these are your sort of geeky, sciencey things, uh, photos, biology, the testing, chemistry, dissolves oxygen, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then we get onto eels. So here we're looking at uh, abundance. So using standardised fight nets here, set so many nets, don't use bait, count and catch, weigh, age them. Um, so the sort of simplest part about the tuna, are they, um, if they have any abnormal um, abnormalities with them, if they're healthy, if they're, they're okay. And then growth rates, we extract the air stones and you get the ageing on them. And uh, a guy earlier was talking about the, the population dynamics of a tuna, and it's a real special thing to have as far as a, um, as a sentinel species. You'll be able to tell, you can see if the eels are coming in uh, or they're being stunted at certain things, something might be knocking them over at you know, a certain age. So that's the uh, added richness that the uh, eel information can tell you. And you can upload video, audio, photos as well. And it, so the example we just had before was, um, was with the schools. So the, the students, the tauira, were doing that on site. They were learning all about the health and the biology of the eel, and they were also uploading all that information and data. Okay. Any questions while we're here? Because I'm running pretty far, so... Any specific questions on the detail? Sure. The what, sorry? Oh, I can't, sorry, I can't hear. Aroha mai, you mentioned something about hornwort, Ooh. the aquatic escapee. Oh, I thought I didn't know. Later. Sorry. Um, yeah, so that's how the, uh, the compass is designed. So it gets really complicated, or well, complex information, brings it together, um, and we're using it, uh, oh yeah, we're going back over our 2006 survey, and our oh, 2000, yeah, 2006 survey, but with a wider um, model. And so on the website there, you better see all the videos and uh, all the other information. Um, just, how do you zoom out? Are we... oh. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much uh, as far as the, the, the motor compass information goes. I'm happy to share that. Uh, I was happy to share that. Uh, and yeah, just like to uh, yeah, uh, thank again uh, to Wai Māori Trust and Ken for uh, bringing us over. And um, yeah, Dad always said, you know, uh, quite simple things about when we were developing, he said the health of the um, healthy tuna means you've got a healthy river, which means you have healthy people. So that was really sort of simple, simple basic things he, uh, he kept on instilling in us. And um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, he passed away last year, um, but I'm pretty sure he's happy, he'll be happy that you'll see the crowd and see oh, a lot of people are like him, um, you know, doing the hard yards, you know, often unspoken yards of, you know, in, in the rivers and looking after the tuna with the similar, um, similar um, aspirations to restore the modi of the tuna, our awa and our people. So, um, yeah, kia ora koutou. Aramoi.
Sure, thank you. 